You're on the desk. She's she went to the finals with his team. She's you were on the desk. She she's on a free ride, okay. Hey, he's still on the team. He can still say he is a grand finals runner up. He had a medal. Even, don't even say he had she's a got medal. A medal. <laughs> he got the medal. She's that even got the medal true. for that. So oh he is, God. you know. He's supporting so his team. Lineups he, here on attack. Double M forty eight pattern for you. Dope, yeah, if I'm seeing that correctly, yeah. And triple five A double bat, go hard coming in I seven M forty eight STRV bats and a T one hundred. They have been using a similar lineup to this for a while, like uh, we could collapse Look on the M forty eight. Go hard, though, Daki. <laughs> the, um... they, they've done this before. They've done this against uh, multiple teams. Uh, sometimes they go with three bats there. Um, but what's the, what's the cap rush? Like, if, if Utopia rush the cap, if they see that there's an overmatch, they have the, the the M48 is supposed to play on the on the ridge and get the get the resets in the beginning. That's what they did as well, I think, against uh, against Oops, I think it was. This is, um, I mean, they're basically taking four tanks out of the battle right now. I had Utopia rushed in. Well, they're gonna keep pushing. They're gonna keep pushing K line the entire time. And Go Hard are backing off the entire time. What are Go Hard doing? They're giving up all vision of base too. Let's have the M48. Koga Collapse will just, like, he's waiting for his team to start clearing out K-Line. Once they do, he will keep pushing along the June. Like, he's he's now currently locked down because of Papa Pavian. But as soon as his tanks keep pushing, Papa Pavian will not be able to hold that position. And then he can play on the ridge. He can play on that ridge line. He go over and get the resets. So it's not all bad here for Gohard. They are doing the rotations on time. But the question is if they expect Bihu and Muka to be there as well. If they don't, then it's game over. Bihu and Muka look like they're going to peek up into the middle of the dry riverbed. Um, K-Line push coming here from Gohard to the top. We're looking at Stefan, who's up in the top corner at A0. Um, trying to climb on his own. Can't really do that, Daki, can you? He can, if he does it right. Otherwise, he wouldn't be doing it. Okay. So, but here we go. Failware negative setting up in position. Let's see how much damage these M48 patterns take. So, the patterns are lit. Are they going to know that somebody's behind them? Yes, of course. I think Papa Pavin is rip. Uh, Mocha. I mean, they can drive forward and get dragged into that riverbed, but there's two shots coming out already. So Mukha taking some damage, Biku taking some damage as well. They're going to try and get themselves safely. They should be going down, not backwards. It's an easy farm for them as Steroids gets killed. Coca Collapse at the top of the map. Negative drops um, Mukha, so that is pattern for pattern right now. Guard lost their pattern, Utopia lost their pattern. Shoku taking a little bit of damage for Utopia and his batcha. Biku's taking a little bit of damage, but what's actually going on here, Daki? The thing is, they have triple cap right now with 27 seconds left, which means that somebody from Guard is going to have to go forward. It's going to be Fun. It's going to be Kaizu, but in the meantime, Failware and Negative are still reloading. And with 19 seconds left, these 5 A's can do a lot of damage while they're trying to uh, punish the guy who comes to reset. Biku, in the meantime, is rushing Nile. If he gets onto the side of him, that's a dead SRV as well. Nile really needs to track him. Nile gets a tracking shot onto Biku. There's a push coming into Cap Circle. 17 seconds left. They're holding out the shots. But look at this red tracer lines coming in. So that shows that Gohard are getting angles onto him. Gohard still have a huge amount of HP on the board, and Utopia are starting to bleed HP everywhere. Nile is getting tracked by Bihu. Bihu has clipped out. He hasn't killed him with all his shots. He's going to try and run away. So that stopped Annihilator from being able to get any crossfire shots. Negative taking some damage here on Gohard. Utopia continuing to bleed HP. They're moving out of the cap circle now to try and take the fight to Gohard. Nile needs to be careful. You could see that an SCRV exposed just the slight part of the 5A instantly punishing it. Kaizu in the meantime has pushed up to a quite strong position. And now Nile really needs to be the crucial player here. He needs some support. He needs a friend and somebody to bail him out because he can do the damage towards his 5As. But not when Bihu who is a threat in the side. Both steroids and also never carry miss shots there into Nile. Now Shoku is being focused as Bihu is also being focused for Utopia. Shoku surviving on 24 HP, Bihu only on 209. Um, Gohard have lost Annihilator now, so they've lost that slight advantage that they had. It's still um, right to knife wire, uh, right to knife wire, right on the wire here. The thing is, Bihu and both, both Bihu and Shoku are low HP. If and, uh, somebody like the Farchek could take both of these guys out of the game rather quickly, uh, Papa Parvin has a healthy amount of HP. But the thing what is so bad for Utopia right now is that they can't go onto the scap. Failware is controlling the south side of the map. He might even fight Bihu if he goes down there. He, we spots him out. He will find him. Now this is the thing. They cannot go on the cap. They cannot play around with the cap because uh, Gohard controls their base. Bihu peaked, missed his shot. Failware missed his shot. Failware misses a second shot. Bihu still holding his shot. Failware doesn't connect with a third shot. Bihu connected. Failware missed with a fourth shot. He has one more shot to go. No, Failware still has two shots to go, sorry. So he's just biding his time, making sure to connect as Bihu is peaking and doing a hell of a lot of damage. Failware is failing here, Daki. Yeah, but 
he needs to just kill him right now. That's the thing. He picked it up. He did take so much damage for it. Way more than it's needed. But the 5Bs are pushing onto Kaizu right now to try and take him out of the game. He's the last... Well, one of the two tanks with HP for the go-hard side. Never carries taking a little bit of damage. We see Sturoids pushing here into failure. Sturoids can get a kill here. It will swing things back in his team's favor. Never carry taking some damage there. As Stefan gets the kill on Never Carry. Shapanik now is stuck between Kaizu and Stefan. But look at this, Shoku getting the kill on um, Stefan. Shoku was the one that had a slight sliver of health. He's on 24 HP, still gunning the game. We've said that so many times. It's always so vital. Papa Pavin now coming over to try and take out Kaizu. Utopia have wrestled control of this battle, Daki, and go hard of thrown it. In the meantime, Zafar is trying to duel with uh, Stewart here in the 5A. Stewart's getting pushed now, but he might pick up Zafar before he goes down. Triple kill from him. Negative should remove him from the game, but against Papa Pavian with 1.2k HP, he can do whatever, and Stewart almost got another shot off. Sturoid surviving there till the very end. Now there's a three man, sorry, two man cap here from Utopia. They know that Negative is the only person alive. This is over. If shots were being counted, they would know he's on two, but Negative can't come in and trade and reset. Papa Pavin can just rush him and take him out on his own. Brilliant play there from Utopia, preserving the guns and still fighting there. Shoku picking up a vital kill against Stefan, then allowing Papa Pavin to, to kill Kaizu. Yeah. This was good stuff from Utopia, really, really good stuff. Failware did really fail in that one. Um, if it would have made such a big difference, probably Shepanek got the last kill there. Really good stuff from Utopia, really well played. Um, Koka Collapse going down and return for that uh, M48 from the side of Utopia. I think they could have done more damage to those patterns. I think they waited maybe a little bit too long to start opening fire. That was really strange from Fairway though. He went in full health and Bihu the, was a one shot. The thing is, uh, Bihu from that position, he spotted Fairway and Bihu is obviously going to peek to try and make the difference because what, what Fairway sees is a small part of the third, a very small part of the third. And as soon as Bihu gets the first shot, like Bihu, obviously both bats have the same interclip, right? So the interclip is the same. So Bihu peeks, right? Mm -hmm. He lands the first shot, Fairway shoots in return. Misses. Misses. What this causes is the fact that Bihu can peek again. He can peek again, shoot him, and by the time Failware is reloaded, Bihu is driving forward again. This is yeah. one of those things that's very annoying for Batshot players when you're doing this. So this causes the fact that every time Bihu has fired, Failware has just about reloaded. Yeah. He fires, Bihu is around the corner again. And as soon as Failware drives forward, Bihu peeks on turret again. The same thing happens, which means that he was a two-shot. Obviously, Bihu couldn't kill him, but he made him a one-shot. Failware lost... Lo Fairware pretty much was going to lose that fight as soon as he misses that first shot. Yeah. Because then Biku just keeps speaking. And he's okay with that because he needs to. Otherwise, Fairware just rushes and kills him. It's crazy. I mean, that, that was, that was not, not cool. It was really unfortunate. Um, looked like Gohards were, were kind of in control. But I was saying, this is the thing about Utopia. They look to be playing extremely strongly as a team. Like, they look like they're very in sync with each other. I said, Papa Pavan, especially right now, is playing fantastic for I them. I said uh, Gohan is a good start. That was not a good start. They need this round. Because after that disappointing performance, after training for another week, after, like, you know, trying to fix the issues yeah, that they've to, had. Yeah, trying to think if to you, themselves, if, what did we do wrong? Let's trying, change it. Yeah, if you're trying to fix the issues and then you come to your next match and you lose the first map 2-0, that's like morale zero, instantly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Now, looking here on the lineups, WZ5A, three of them coming out for um, Gohard. We have two bat chats, three bat chats, and a T100. Now, Utopia going with a single pattern, a Rhyme Panzer here from Mukha. Uh, triple 5A, double bat chat. So, fairly... Fairly flexible lineup here for Utopia. Well, we know what the uh, Remetal Panzerwagen is going to do. He's going to be climbing up on P9 by himself like we saw Stefan try. But look at the stuff from Gohar. They are okay. not interested in number two base whatsoever. They're going super aggressive towards the south. Perhaps trying to catch... Yeah, but they might be trying to catch out a Batshot or something that is going to be crossing K-Line. Or they just want to go uh, catch that 5A. And if they keep pushing, catch they will. Shepanik. But They do see Shepanik and he shoots. Yeah, but dead. the issue is the timing. He's not. He didn't cross fully yet. He's still in that hole where you see a lot of uh, randoms uh, uh, be played. He's still in that hole, so they, they didn't catch that, but I guess they just wanted to take map control over that side, and they have. Now, Utopia have a huge amount of information to know where all these tanks from Gohard are. They're all following the same line, they're following negative here, so it looks like something that um, Gohard have put a little bit of practice into to split across. Uh, two tanks going one way, two tanks going the other way, so interesting to see what Gohard are planning to do here. Well, they have taken control over this side of the map, so that's good stuff from them now. We need to see how this progresses, like how they cannot cap, 
obviously. Like, it's impossible for them to cap number one base. So there needs to be some sort of rotation here, a decisive one for that, that causes a, a rotation or a commitment from Utopia. Stewart's relocating back. I guess what they really want to cause is Utopia to have an overcommitment on one side. If Utopia has, like, if, if, if you have two tanks, Utopia has three, that's like, you know, that's an overcommitment for them. Now, Utopia has about one, two, three tanks focused on that area of the map. Well, Gohard has also three, so it's even, quite even. Um, Coca Collapse is really not going to, like, do much in this trade here. He might win it, he might not, but it's super hard to actually do that. The, the, the rotation has to come out from Gohard. I don't see how they play from this point on and win. Like, they need to pretty much pull back tanks, and they kind of have to re-push the other side one way or another. Yeah, I mean, it's two minutes into the map. They've got a bit of map position. Nice. nice shot there from Coca Collapse into Shapanic. The thing is, is like, okay, they've got this position, but how are they going to make it work to their advantage here? Um, never carry peeking here over the June in the middle. So, I mean, what we're seeing here from Gohard is either they're going to do some kind of play on base one, or they're going to try and kill everybody. Utopia are going to happily not push into them because they're defending team. They're going to sit back and run down that clock. So. What do you think they're going to be doing here, Daki? What's, what's Gohard's plan? I guess they're just shipping away right now, thinking about what their next move is going to be. Um, so far, they can't push zero line. That is just absolute suicide. Like, that would insta-die because you have um, steroids there, supported by a bat, supported by Bihu, supported by the Rheinmetall as well, and Papa Pavia, and there's four tanks. That's insta-dead, so they cannot push that. Um, one slight thing that they... Ooh, negative's gonna go on to the cap. He's super low, he's facing backwards. Two roads might be able to spot him though. I wanna see about that. He, he does not have anything special like Camonet or so, so. Steroids. It's also possible that Steroids can't spot him and peeking up. Actually, he cannot spot him because if he. No, 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 he can't, he can't spot him because if he peeks up there, Kaizu will shoot him in the side. And I don't think Shapana can spot, uh, peek up and spot either. Biku did peek over the dude to get shot at there. A um, bit unfortunate. He was the one trying to get vision, so maybe this is the, the plan here from Gohard. They can use that um, super low profile of the T100 and it'll be fine sitting at the back. The only danger is if they send in a T1000 and then he's in real trouble. Hmm. Perhaps, but they'll have to go back into the future to find that first. <laughs> back to the future, yeah. Um, <coughs> so far, so good for Gohard. 50% cap. The Utopia is going to have to commit something to spot. I mean, yeah, either Sturos is going to have to push forwards or Shapanek is going to have to peek up very high to try and make the spot. I feel like Shapanek will have to be the one that peeks up all the way to spot, but he's getting oh. out-traded. That's Stefan. I think that was Stefan that hit him as well from the back lines. Right, he's in K8. Right in the cupola there. And look at all the blind shots here trying to come Stefan in. To There's a connection. They got the connection. He backs off it was immediately. Cool. Immediately. Yeah, but they did a good amount of damage for that, though. Shapanek down to 395. Um, one of the options that Gohard could go for at, at any given time is, is the one where you take like two, three bats and you jump over a Coca collapses straight into Shepanek and then you keep pushing towards Stewards because you can't really punish for that, but you need to push Stewards at the same time as well with like one or two 5As. If you don't do that, then Stewards just sits full down. So that is something they could go for at one point to push Shepanek, continue onto Stewards, kill him, and then start the cap again, for example. But that's risky. It's a risky play, though. I don't think they want to go for that because they have negative capping right now. Cap started out again. Steroids took a shot to the the gun and repaired that almost instantly. Um, I want to see how close Biko is getting with these blind shots. Uh, he's getting very close. You need to really see it from the point of view of uh, negative there and um, to see how close they're landing with the, with the laser. Maybe, maybe we can see with the laser. Lasers. Nice. Nicely done. Okay, so he's a little oh. bit off right oh. now. Yeah, down a bit. He's getting closer, though. Yeah. He's doing it like measured. Oh, he's, do he's doing step by step. He's shooting somewhere and yeah. he's shooting. Oh, uh, that's the same place. That was the same place. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to go slightly to over again? Oh, no, too short. Yeah, I guess I landed short. But look, 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 look where Stefan and Kaiser are. Okay, they're pushing up like you said. They're getting ready to gather over. That's what I told you. Jump over, get your panic, and then move on to steroids. Exactly as you said, Daki. Yes, that's what I think. You're a wizard, Daki. <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, they might not do it because they have the cap right now, but I think they, they can still get away with it. Shoku's taking a lot of damage. There's other just chip, chipping away here at Utopia. This is 
This is nice from Gohard. I like this. It's like a base one play. Let well, they spot it negative. So far getting shot. Negative is shot and he is backed off. They go um, Stefan and Kaizu. Look we'll at this to pop. Oh, peeking up. Stefan took a lot of damage for that. Kaizu gets the kill on Shoku. Well, this works as well. I don't know if they were waiting for that or waiting to push over, but they made it work one way or another. They can still push over if they want to at any given time. Negative can now go back onto the cap because Utopia has lost the tank. Now, the thing is for... Uh, uh, Stefan took so much damage for that, though. The thing is for Gohard, that time is running. Like, they have 3 minutes and 20 seconds. This is the last time they can really afford to do this thing with negative. We, now they need to start negative to start capping. In the meantime, they also need to go for the push. Like, you want to have both Stefan cap pressure... Stefan cap with them as well? Mm, maybe. Yeah, he will. You need to have both cap can pressure you, and push Stefan pressure. In front of him? Mm. If they push Stefan in front of him, and he can hide behind Stefan. Stefan's not I don't think Stefan, I don't think Stefan's uh, tall enough to do that. It's always an angle. If he was side on, maybe no? Maybe. Very maybe. I mean, negative's in a different area. Stefan shot and backed off, so... I mean, he connected with Bihu and then immediately ran away. Well, these heavies, he from, uh, these heavies from Utopia are going to start pushing for forward rather quickly, I think. Like, never carry and steroids. Papa Pivin's going for the spot, or trying to. At least it looked like it. Backing off. I think these 5 A's are going to start closing the distance for uh, Utopia. Coca-Cola take another hit there. Um, he's down to 4-3-6. Failware taking a hit. Kaizu taking a shot. He does get damaged. Amoraki repairs immediately. They've jumped into Shapanik. Shapanik got a shot off there. Kaizu's getting one into um, Shapanik. Shapanik just misses out on getting another kill there. Um, and Failware is trying to shoot across into Sturois to keep him back. Now, Biku's taking a lot of damage. It looks like Utopia are trying to force something here because they don't want Gohard to try and cap out. They want to try and run down the clock here, Daki. Well, they have 45 seconds. Sturois is now going to start taking the place of Shapanik. He is taking some damage before that. I really think this is never carry. He needs to start pushing forwards as well. Ooh, nice from Safarchik coming around the back, connecting there into Sturoids. Now he can finish off Papa Pavin as well, who's on a reload. He's going to ram him for a little bit more damage, get a shot off as well, go back in maybe for another ram. But no, it's actually Failware getting the kill on Papa Pavin. Biku coming in, trying to get shots. He peeks over, but they know exactly where it is. He's trying to get shots. It's negative he wants to connect with. Gohard still have seven guns in the game. This is a problem that Utopia have. Their three tanks are going to just everywhere they peek, there's going to be a gun facing them. But look at that, never carry. Picks up a kill onto Collapse. Yeah, but they need to stay alive for another uh, 40 seconds, and I don't think it's going to happen. Biku needs to spot this gap for 40 seconds, because Gohard can just put three on them. And it will take only 40 seconds to complete, so they need to reset it under that, which is not going to happen. Even with two guys, they have enough time to cap. Biku just needs to die, and then Muka is in an isolated position where he's not going to make anything work. And I'm pretty sure Sturrod's got Amorak. That looked like an Amorak explosion. Uh, we came around, he didn't have... Well, he wasn't on full he HP, He was on but 900. Yeah, he still had a decent amount um, hit right into the rear end. So Muka's going to run down. Feywer knows exactly what to expect, and Muka's getting hit every time there. And um, Feywer just holding his shots. Although Muka can get a kill on him, has to be... Oh, nicely done. Just slightly um, hides back there. So Annihilator, as we kind of expect, he would just go over and bully out Biku because he has the HP to trade. Uh, Mokka rushed into Failware, but uh, Kaizu has two shots left. He can come over and duel with him as well. But I mean, this is no way that uh, Mokka's going to get a reset. Five, uh, five seconds? seconds to no. go. He might get a reset, but he'll die doing it, basically. Um, one second coming in, it looks like he will get Nope, Kaizu gets a triple kill, and nice to come back into that one from Gohard. Nice to see something different being used in the Sand River. I really wonder if, if Stewart's got Amrak or not, because that could have changed something. If, if, he... he'd, if he'd been staying a bit, the thing is, is that when Zafar was coming around the back, Zafar still had a lot of HP. So Zafar would no, have I just... mean, like, he could have killed maybe one or two of the bats before Zafar killed him. I think the bats were both on reload at that point. I think both of them were on reload after that shot, and Zafar would take two shots to kill him. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I'm gonna be call 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 production here in a second. Be like, <laughs> uh, but no, good, good that Gohard came back into it. Different tactics. Nihilator are coming out top damage. Failware, um, reminding me why I shouldn't have removed them from my fantasy team. Uh, Coca Collapse coming up um, third. So uh, three top tanks coming out from Gohard. Production is compensating compensating for bad predictions. Yeah, I mean their predictions were and, and, terrible. And bad haircuts Ter as well. Whoa, whoa. There's a guy that has a haircut very similar to yours right now, to be honest. I mean, uh, other than it's like three, 30 centimeters longer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really... We have to be careful because they can put stuff up on the screen, so we're not going to have the last laugh. I always have the last laugh. Um, but yeah, I mean, it could have been slightly different if, uh, I mean, Shuku spotted the cap. I don't know if he could have made it out safely. That's the question. If he did a full speed spot, for example, because he stopped to shoot negative. Perhaps if he, like, uh, just went backwards, he wouldn't uh, die. Uh, 
that's the question. And also, did this WZ get Amorax or not? That's another question. If he didn't, I'm pretty sure he could have killed at least one or two of the bots. So maybe either Amorax or just double tap to the same it time. It looked like an maybe. Amorax. Well, I didn't see. I was I was too busy looking at. Like, I, was, I had my eyes focused down on Zafarchik rather than up to where he was mm. shooting, and you were so it was just different eye level, basically watching different things. Um, not watching the right things. Oh well, oh, good stuff from Gohar there, though. They did the push I was talking about, but it was already too late in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you took, I mean, the no, I think for doing the it. thing is that why I thought it was too late is because um, in the meantime, Utopia already had like two bats in that position as well. But now we're going to go into mines. Cap two there in the water it doesn't really get done. I used to get sometimes cap rushed. Uh, cap one up over by the town. Now we're going to have Gohard on the attack. We're going to have. Utopia on the defense and lineups. Well, vehicles have seen used plenty of times here. IS4, mm, interesting. Um, kind of mixed lineup there from Utopia on the defense. Yeah, but quite standard non nonetheless, though. I mean, they have all tanks that. Okay, where is Papa Pavian going? That is the only question I have right now. Is he going to try? He's not going to try and claim No, no, yet. no, he is. I wanna, that's what I want to see, dude. Oh, ho, oh. ho! Style points. Nice. This man is starting to be the, the one to watch for his team. He can right get now. behind that rock on time, actually. There we go. They won't even know it. He is he has been one of the standout players for his team right now. Like by far and away the standout player. Good stuff from Papa Pav and he has the hill. Oh look at this. He could also cross over at one point by the way, if he wanted to. No. Gohard looks like they were planning something down south. On the No, they were just trying line. to shoot the crossing because Stefan's next to the rock. And they're still going to hold the angle because they know if Shuku crosses over, he'll be spotted. Um, so he'll be spotted. Biku is in an interesting position as well, though. Uh, look where he's sitting. He's just like between the rock. He knocked over the three um, to make sure he doesn't get spotted, waiting for somebody to peek onto the hill. Uh, Utopia is trying to counter like the, the basic reactions from the teams. This is interesting here. Um, we've not seen teams wait for something like this for quite a long time. And this is what sometimes... You saw the tree? You saw the tree fall <laughs> on the island? No, no, no. That means that, I mean, Koga collapsed on it as well. That means they know that sure. somebody crossed over. Yep. So now they, this, this, they're going to back off because there's no more point to hold the angle if somebody's already crossed. Failure is expecting someone. I mean, this, they know they've got the T100, but they don't know if the T100 was who got onto the island or not. They wouldn't have spotted the T100 if he crossed over, but he does seem to be expecting it. Maybe they've maybe they've scrummed against each other. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, Utopia don't have a lot of information here of Gohard and where they are. Uh, I mean, Utopia are going to be maybe a little bit confused. The double mouse now starting to push up into the hill. Coca Collapse leading Annihilator. Annihilator looks like he's actually going to go around the back of the hill where Negative and Safarchik. Please tell me. No, they're not going to do okay. Um, two, one, one, three. So maybe Gohard planning something down. I mean, we've seen this before, Daki, where the tanks go over, don't they? They go over to like F9 and start trying to trade with basically never carry. Yeah. Um, the thing is, never carry does not have a lot of support right now. He has Biku, who's not in a position to help because he's behind the house. Look at this, look at this. He's climbing up right in front of Kaizu. Yeah, he got over all the way. They won't spot him. Um, Biku gets spotted out at the back in his E4 and he gets a shot connected into him. Papa Pavan getting a shot into fail where Kaizu immediately shoots where he thinks he was and it was right beside him. So they know Papa Pavan's up there. He is lit and that can give his team a huge amount of information. He climbed all the way on the top like the old way people used to do. Now this is super vital what he's doing here. Now it's worth pointing out because people are going to ask about this in chat. That claim is still available right now, but it's not the same claim, is it? No, it's not the same. It got changed. There's some invisible walls, but they didn't extend them long enough, so you can still get around it. Uh, but it's a very risky move to do now. Yeah, because if you fail, you get stuck next to the rock for at least like 15 to 20 seconds, and you're almost always dead. It's also almost impossible to do in randoms. Yep, and for the counter to come back up and try, and for anyone to it's come up and try and get hard. rid of them is going to be much more difficult, so... I mean, the T100 doesn't necessarily do a lot of damage, but it's just the vision he can give his team on this side of the flank. And now, Gohard are going to probably think to themselves, well, we need to do perhaps something different. I don't think they can push down. They will get farmed to hell. Because usually when you push down 9-0, Biku has relocated, by the way, from behind the house. If you didn't notice, he's yep. back at J8. If they now do the usual push, the usual push is going down 8-9-9-8-9-0 line. Uh, English is hard when you're slow in the brain. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> if you go down 890 line, Still they will not just life. take the damage from Biku. 
Because guess, usually well, you go to like H7, H8, because you have the rock there to work with, and then the T100 will just be putting shot after shot after shot into the back of you, and we see how long it takes to kill that mouse, right? So that's not worth it at all. So they have to push 1-2. They have no other option to push than 1-2. And Utopia should be punishing this really hard. Biku should also not be looking down line zero line. Because of the fact that Papa Pavian is up, Papa Pavian gives early info. He gives the info that when they're pushing, he spots them crossing over to the city. He knows negative is there, but I don't think uh, like he, he would spot him. So he they, he they know. When the push comes, they know. That means Biku should be aiming on one-two line. It should be... Because if he goes to well, the back corner... Parting shot onto yeah. negative as he goes. If he goes to the back corner, he can also shoot one-two line. So they should have both the TDs and Shapanek cool. and Shuku um, shooting the, the one-two line crossing. Coca-Cola slowly making his way up here, but he's spotted out there by Shoku or Muka. And Zafarchik facing off here against Steroids. Collapse is connected there by Mocha. Um, Shapanik bounces his shot and he's going to start a cap. Huge ricochet again there from Mocha off the side of the turret. This is an SCRV shooting at a mouse. Annihilator though. though just took one to the face rolling over up there in the middle. This SCRV should be farming this mouse pretty quickly. They are going to put a bat behind it but I don't know how successful this is going to be. They have Shuku on the island though. If Shuku peeks out he should be able to get a reset. Fairway is not fully safe. I don't think so, at least. I think Shapanik can still connect into him. There's the farm stamp coming to Coca Cola. That's Shoku. Um, from Shoku. Shoku's taking a bit of damage himself for this, but um, he's got nice flanking shots um, into the side of Coca Cola. Uh, whole clip out there. Uh, and Fairway got reset. It. And Mocha got the kill on Coca Cola. So go hard, bleeding HP, and now lost a mouse. Um, Fairway in a kind of dangerous situation here. Can't run without getting shot. So. Looks like Gohan's initial plans had to be changed from the 8 line to the 1-2 line and Utopia are in a really nice defensive position right now. They don't really need to do anything. They have 1 minute and 35 seconds. This mouse and Ice 4 are starting to work their way up to the hill. Uh, Stefan... Okay, is he gonna cross? No, he's just spotting in 1-2 line. Shapana can really take the damage if he wants to and just cross over. I mean, he almost doesn't have to care. Failware is not safe towards Shuku, so Shuku should peek out at any moment and just reset. I mean, no, not any moment. He should let it go on for at least another 20 seconds or so yeah. and then reset. Just run down the clock and then go for the reset. I mean, Failware, so you can see him pre in here already. He wants to try and get that um, quick shot off. He's loaded with heat as well. I mean, I get. I think the heavies from the hill are also aiming there, but if Shuku does it right, yeah, because Failware is perma spotted, he can just auto-aim him. Honestly, you can just... Like, you can right-click him and then just drive yeah. out just about enough and kind of pre-fire the shot, if you know what I mean. You can kind yeah. of pre-fire the shot, so as soon as he comes around the corner, he shoots, and he should not take any damage from the heavies for that. There's and he just got splashed by HE. Coming in there already, yeah. He got splashed by HE. So, um, bit of a tough spot for Gohart here. Um, not looking like there's an easy way out, as Feyware does get shot out there by Shoku, and Shoku doesn't take any damage in return. So Shoku might want to peek again, try and get the kill, and he does the trade shots, but Shoku got a kill for that. 31 HP, oh, losing his commander as well, but... Doesn't matter. Again, we just saw it though previously in Sand River, you cannot um, discount someone on health like that. It's still a gun in the game. It's a backjack. It can still really wreck your day. There's nothing that Gohard can do here that is going to change the course of this round. Negative peaks and takes a shot there from Steroid and Zafarchik bounces. Never carry taking a couple of shots there for his trouble though, because Annihilator is able to move up. Stefan finally gets a kill on Shoku. He pushed over there. Um, got himself stuck, actually. Actually, no, he stopped into the, the long grass there, so that's a bit sneaky from him, getting a couple of shots off there. Looks like they're continuing to focus here into steroids and never carry. Go hard, going a bit aggressive here. Um, still bleeding HP, so Utopia have lost the bat chat. And now Gohard have lost a mouse, they've lost a Batcha, and they've lost a 113. So, a really difficult task here for Gohard to come back into this one. They're trying to trade, but it's just not going to work for them because Utopia has the double TD that are sitting in the back. These mouse, this mouse, IS 4, they're fine to trade. And even if they kill them, even if they kill the mouse, even if they kill the IS 4, there's a Panzer Kampfwagen 7 also sitting there Up who's going to the yeah, be annoying. And even after they kill that, they still have to cross against Papa Pavian in two TDs. This, this nice doesn't work. Stefan, immediately repaired, gets his second shot out. Even, even if Stefan hits a full clip and sets him on fire, <laughs> it is not going to be enough to change this round because even if he does that, he's going to have to reload. And by the time he's reloaded, it's yep. over almost. There's, there's one minute 15 pretty much left on the clock right now. Go hard, just 
Really not much having an answer. I mean, Utopia set their defensive style well. It just shows the power of the claim, still being able to do that. I mean, to be honest, Papa Pavan hasn't had much of an impact, but he forced Gohar to change their plans, which is, which is in a way, a, a massive thing, yeah. Sometimes the threat of something is more important than the uh, actual uh, damage he does from there. The threat yep. of him being able to shut down an entire push on 9-0 line is enough to be afraid. Uh, it's enough to make them rotate completely around and go for that cap strat, which I'm pretty sure wasn't their plan from the beginning, because uh, you can't really have a bat in 1-2 line just, you know, killing your bacha behind the mouse. Biku getting a kill there on Stefan, who's over on the island. Now we can see the push coming in here, Sturoids going against Annihilator. Sturoids will come off reload quicker. Um, 647, Sturoids is not going to get a kill on him. 441 might actually survive. Annihilator connects with him. Can he crush him? No. Um, so Sturoids probably going to get a kill here on Annihilator. And go forward a little bit. Nope. Oh, nope. That's a swing and a miss. He hit the outside of the turret yep. instead of the mantlet. Never carry. Might be able to save him. Uh, Nile is Amarag though, so it doesn't and really matter. Time is, time is up. over. So Utopia leading again, two to one, and it's looking like we could be getting one for one trades here all the way into a potential tiebreaker. Good stuff there from Utopia. We did say that there was a potential there for the climb still to be done. Yeah. They used it very well, and uh, yeah, Goharp, they didn't seem like that was their plan, but obviously when something like this happens, it's like you have to adapt on the fly. And if their entire plan was based around 9-0 online, and then you all of a sudden have to go towards 1-2 line, doesn't really work out that well. Good stuff there from Shuku, Shapanek as well, and guys with steroids. I mean, it was good from Utopia. It was really good. What, what else can you say about it? It was solid defense. Yeah. Um, we've seen the defense being broken many times already here on Mines, and now we're seeing a, a solid defense. I'd much rather have Gohard do something with pushing down 1-2 line with like 113s or something rather than this. Yeah. But the thing is also because of Papa Pavin's position, um, you get Bihu's position, which we talked about. Like Bihu was aiming on 1-2 line. So if you push down there with like uh, 113s, like we saw Gohard do before, one of them should die because you take an STRV hit. Mm -hmm. You take at least a Bachat hit from Shuku as well. You take a Panzer Kampfwagen hit and you take an E4 hit. That kills a single tank instantly. Yeah. So no matter what Gohard did, they're going to lose a lot, but I'd almost like that more than this cap strat, which we haven't seen work yet. So, I don't know. I would rather have them see do something crazy on 1-2 line than to go cap. Well, we're going to see the team swap position now. So now it's Gohard's turn to be on defense, and we're going to see Utopia on the attack. And I see a GC already. Conqueror gun carriage. Yep, for Utopia. Interesting. We've seen this tank work. We've seen it not work. We've seen it being countered. We've seen it being countered. We've seen it do tremendous support damage. And um, Sturoid's going to be playing it like we go said. Gohard can play hell. Gohard can still go for the hell. Look at the lineup. It's, yeah, it's a lucky situation where you have two fantastic artillery players. So I mean, they can still go towards the hill. As Zafar is going to do the climb as well. Just watch him. He's going to do it in a T100 light tank. He's going for it as well. And Zafar going for the exact same thing we just saw earlier on. Uh, no. No. Pretty much. Actually, I think he's done it okay. Yeah, he's just got to rock it back from forward a bit. He's so doing the other thing, he's, he's just going doing, straight yeah, for it, like like a thrown. This is more, this is more risky. Yeah, like, I've, sh I've shown you spotted. this. He can get shot here. He, uh, Biku and Maka are ready. Maka can get shot, and Biku's still reloading. So, Maka did get shot. They know Zafarchik is up there, but he's reloaded in one second. What is their plan? I mean, is he going to get a connection here onto Zafarchik? Um. Missed. Steroids is fired and missed. You see the puff that's of smoke the thing, above uh, That's the thing about the T100 light tank. Um, because they didn't have a TVP on the side of Utopia. So far, can actually get away with that. He took one shot from the T100 light tank. He might have taken two. Yep. But the bad shots are not reloaded on time. They don't have the reload. Yeah, it would only, it doesn't it only right, work if they got the smaller gun, wouldn't it? Yeah, but nobody's yeah. going to bring the yeah, smaller gun because there's no point. You know, you do have to so to try and he yeah. can get up before the batches are reloaded. I, I, I believe that this might become standard now with the T100 light tank doing that. Uh, Until it gets removed next patch. I mean, I was expecting people to start climbing again, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I think um, I think this is the, the devs are going to look at this as a challenge and be like, oh, okay, okay, we missed stuff, okay, well, br rocks everywhere, <laughs> is what we see now. We just see like a ring of rocks around the map or something. Look at the far as well, like, look at his equipment, uh, it's, it's based around the... Uh, if we can look at Zafar's equipment, you can see that he also had a speed governor. Uh, okay, so that's, it's like that's an interesting thing. 
Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, at speed, uh, it's 10%, right? I think it is 10% to the engine uh, power. Mm -hmm. But if you leave it on too long, it damages your engine. And he's got food and he's got repair pack. Yeah. So speed governor Vents to get up quicker. Well. Yep. So going for everything to, to boost the speed of the tank. Yeah. Um, and he gets up there nice and quickly. Well. Now, Mukha switching flanks here, coming down one, two lane. Steroids reposition yeah, himself as well. But look how far forward well. Stefan is in his IS-7. It's like bold. It's hold down. <laughs> you can't do anything against it. Uh, how are they going to dig out this IS-7? Maybe already. Maybe, but it will take him a long, long time to uh, find that IS-7. Can't really deal with that. He'll be pretty invincible in that position almost. Actually, not pretty. Almost completely invincible. Never carry. Taking a shot to the face there in his 5A. Yeah, it's because the uh, Safarchuk is spotting him, and that means uh, early damage will come out on towards him. That's the power of the T100. And this is going to be a similar situation to what we just saw, isn't it? It's going to be really difficult. Oh, never carry. Stop taking damage, laddie. I'll put you in my fantasy team to, to do damage, not Wait, take damage. Is in your fantasy team? Yep. That's oh, him. That's him. great. Right. GG game over for him now. Now. I mean, this is going to go simply the way it was in the last round, wasn't it? It's going to be difficult for Utopia to push in to go hard because of that light tank up on the hill giving them so much vision yes. on that side. And then we're going to get a late switch to the 1-2 line, which is either going to fail spectacularly or work spectacularly. No, it's going to fail spectacularly. Stefan will be able to shoot negative Kaizu in the 113 and Niall as well. It's, 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 it's almost the same thing as what happened, what would happen when uh, Gohart would push down. Because you have Stefan, who will get the shot, oh. at least. Biku. Yeah, ammo rack as well. Nice one, though, oh, from Biku. Damaged ammo rack, sorry, not ammo um, rack. But, like, the same thing will occur. And they have an RT also, which they have to make work for the next six minutes, but he hasn't really done that much. Like, he needs to pay dividend, and it's hard, very hard for him to make it happen as it is. Yeah, I mean, when the team fights come out, you've got Mukha and you've got steroids. They're going to be negligible. Now, you take out Z uh, Mukha for Zavarchik. Um, <laughs> Kaiser, though, takes 300-ish. They're out in similar situations, but they're same tanks. Now, you, you've got the Conquer gun carriage against anything else on Gohard. So, Gohard have the advantage in tanks. Uh, 62 HP. And um, we'll slap in the face with an HE shell. You can see um, never carry. Yeah, it depends on how Kuga yeah. collapses angling. You can see here, like from his first person, that he's really <laughs> angling well. The only thing okay. that that's the only thing he can do. He can yeah. only fire H Shriek. Nothing else will do any damage whatsoever. And HP always does damage, Decky. Oh, H E. Not always. That's what you say. I mean, I, I listen to the Lord. Ah, uh, that could be anybody right now. Huh? You listen to the Lord. My lord and savior, QB. Ah, okay. QB says AG always does damage. All right. I didn't know that. Wow. I'm disappointed. Nihilator getting stunned there. So great shot by artillery. Great shot. By, yeah. Honestly, it should get, uh, you know, uh, I had a talk with this. You know, I really think Artie's underpowered as it is. It underpowered? Well, fair play to the enemy player. It was a great shot. It should it should get an, a damage buff back to original values and should keep the stun and the accuracy as well. And I think then it'd be perfect. Can you remember when Artie was tier 8? When it was like uh, the kind of damage the tier 8 used to do? Yes. That's what we should bring back. There's not enough Artie. We should bring back 5 Artie per side. <laughs> Uh, negative actually got 552 from uh, blind shot from GC. Chipping away at the HP though, so I mean Utopia Slowly. is is doing damage to go hard and um, bringing the HP back down here. And um, the stuns are annoying and um, the shots are annoying coming in from artillery, but Sturois just has not enough time to be able to get this to work for him. Biku taking a little bit of damage there on Utopia. Um, Never Carry has taken a lot of damage in Utopia. He's well below um, half health at the moment, and nobody from Gohard really is is near half health. Fail no, still thing the, full health. It's the thing we talked about, right? Like the thing I said to you is as well. Like Artie, it does chipping damage, but it yeah. does chipping damage on a lot of different tanks. It doesn't really consolidate onto one target. It it's spread across the team. Now that doesn't have such a big impact as you would think it does, because everybody took one or two sh one or two shots. It's also it's a prolonged fight as well. Well, never so ca look at never carry. He's yeah. a two shot. If he pushes somewhere, he dies instantly. It's it's a prolonged fight, so artillery only has so much damage they can do. Like if if the fight was longer than art, he could farm away, but he doesn't have that um, thing to farm away here. It's only some kind of lucky, um, 
lucky connection would do it. Negative is not even there. He's already down beside a separate rock. So unless that he was to get a lucky pen or something like that, then he's just wasting shells all match. And, and you uh, go hard are happy to just run down the clock here. We're down to three minutes now. You move has to come. Are going to be forced into a move. It's pushing one two um, line. Shoku and Bihu already over there on the one two line, ready to go. But uh, it's just too late to be able to do anything, so it's, it's looking like it's going to be a 1-1 one -one again. too late just yet, but they have to push very quickly um, to make it work. Camo looks awesome with the mouse. I do like their camo, I think it's the coolest one this season. Any camo looks cool with the mouse. It does, yeah, it shows it off. The, the Clan Wars digital camo looks awesome on it as well. Well, Shapan is going to push first, trying to take some attention, trying to take some shots, hoping that the Go Hard guys are going to fire at him, but it's not going to happen, I think. Guys who might. But with 2 minutes and 26 seconds left, I mean, they have to cross 1-2 line right here, right now. This is bold. Shapanik's going to get all up in Stefan's face. Shoku and Bihu, you can see here on EF2 area, ready to make a run across. Papa Pavan ready to push at the same time. Shapanik might get a shot here into Stefan. Well, Stefan actually fired. connects really well. Shapanik hasn't shot yet. Now the back chat's going to run. Shapanik is just going to do blocking duty on Stefan. Stefan's looking to aim across because you know what's coming. Mukha's taking shots first in the T100. He gets past OK. Shoku takes a shot, but he gets past. No, he takes two shots, gets past OK. But Negative is sitting there waiting. They need to focus into Negative. But look at this. Shoku could go down for this, Daki. This is really dangerous play for him. And Negative gets the kill. The other bank, the Bihu, didn't fall over. So why didn't Bihu go with his teammates? Uh, Bihu, I guess, shooting towards Stefan. Stefan. The mouse should be picking that up. Uh, I don't think he should be able to get out of there. Papa Pavio might get it or Bihu. Bihu needs to be careful because he was still spotted. Stefan still alive and in the meantime Papa Pavio is getting pushed by Coca Collapse and he has no support and Philware is pushing on towards Never Carry and he picked him up and it might have been a little bit too late for Utopia. Philware getting a kill on Never Carry. Sturo is getting a kill on Stefan but he only had a sliver of health left. Now Papa Pavio is going to come off reload. He's going to get shots into Coca Collapse. Tries to go for a side shot. Gets through there. Gets to get himself protected from Zafarchik up on that hill, but look at this, Coca Club still has angles into Papa Pau and he's not going to be able to protect himself against that mouse. Papa Pau and puts one through the side uh, of his turret. Might be come close. Um, Kaizu getting the kill on Shapanik down into the cap circle. Now we're down to the last minute of the game. Look at this, Papa Pavan just missing there on not Coca Club's not getting through. And if they had more time, yep, it could have still gone in their favor, but Gohard just have more HP here to be able to trade against Utopia and vitally an extra gun because they don't have an artillery. Even with more time, I don't know. I feel where just cleaned up two tanks and then the rest of the boys from Utopia would have to push in still. Even if they did this earlier, it would not have worked out because Gohard did the damage on the crossing, they did more than enough. Uh, maybe if Utopia had more time, they could go for something else, but now never carry was just left by himself because he was solo HP and I feel where just went and killed him like straight. Bihu not able to get that final penetrating shot there onto the mouse of Coca Collapse. Annihilator is going to come round into the tail end of Bihu. And Feywer picking up a triple kill as Mocha tries a cheeky shot at Annihilator just to distract him. But with only a T100 in the cap circle who spotted left. And only five seconds left pretty much on the clock right now. It's going to be Gohard picking up this round. Two for two. Um, teams proving quite equal against each other here, Daki. But again, not really seeing the strong go hard that we were expecting to see but in flip side not seeing the same well, utopia so it's both teams doing well though to hold on under the yeah. defenses showing good stuff showing the climbs off um, mines between two good teams can be a one one for sure yeah a slow map very slow in this matter i think both teams run out of the time and so. they both did similar things so they both kind of really put a kind of wrench in each other's um plans and um, by by having that uh, late tank climb up the hill. So, guys who did most damage. Did you see the 2.4? So, not bad, but it's 10 minute game though. 2.4 over a 10 minute game. True. Annihilator there uh, coming next in the E4. Uh, potentially, you didn't want to see more, especially shooting 11 times, but a lot of them were blind shots as well. So, we'll let that one slide. Bihu then, Papa Pavan. Papa Pavan, we will talk about him a lot, I'm pretty sure, throughout the season. I think he's one of the key players for you. He's done pretty well sure. so far. I mean, yeah, I think he's done well so far. Um, but that was mines though, not much to say about it, right? I mean, we saw what happened, the climb, uh, blocking off most of the aggression on 9-0 line, forced 1-2 line push, which doesn't really work when the team's prepared yeah. for it. It's going to be going into Ghost Town. I mean, at least if we give Artie uh, a, a, a damage buff, then people like Sheesh and others uh, can mark their 50v, perhaps once upon a lifetime, you know? But if you increase Arte, Daki, then it's going to make it harder to play something like the 50v. They can, they can play it in Platoon. I've, I've watched the people do this. this. This really works. Okay, explain it. Uh, you know, you pick an Arte, you put optics on your tank, and you drive forward, and then Arte just shoots. 
and then you get like 10,000 spotting damage and you know you get three marks okay but would that work for the 50b is that the way to do it with the 50b is that how you would is Man. that how you three marks your 50b if by you, spotting for artillery if you put camo is that what you're telling us any tanks a spotter if you put optics you and camo on you suicide okay? your loads and in, in the 50b every time every time divai right Okay, now moving here into Ghost Town. Things are all tied between these teams. We're two maps down. We're going into map number three here. It is 2 2. Gohard are going to start on the defense. Utopia are going to start on the attack. Gohard on the red side. Utopia on the blue side. It's, it's going to be, be interesting to see this one. It's going to be interesting to hear from them as well. Yeah, I believe this one we're going to use a team speak round this one. So we're going to be listening to the teams. It'll be interesting to hear how the comms are in Gohard, whether they sound calm, whether they sound, you know, Mm -hmm. Agitated or not? Um, interesting as well. The go hard lineup hasn't um, changed all match. It's been exact same um, players the entire time. Yeah. Um, so far in the Leo one, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan of this tank just yet. I mean, we've seen it a few times now. Uh, Kuritz has played it as well. It's just a big box, honestly. Like, everything pens it. Everything, absolutely everything pens it. Yeah, I think T ones can pen it. That's the thing. Um, Stefan just ran through the cap circle there and taking out some stuff behind him, backing it off. But look at this, Utopia are not doing any kind of cap shenanigans. They are looking for a fight. Mm. Yeah, I guess they will push the mouses onto the cap. Um, reminds me a little bit of how Elevate plays this map as well, to be honest, actually. Not, not even joking around. Elevate kind of plays it similar. They put the mouses. Why, why would you be joking around there, Daki? I mean, because some people like to laugh at that. Everyone you know? likes to laugh. Um, they put mouses onto the cap, and they're still undefeated, by the way. So, like, you know, I don't yeah, think they care. Yeah, strong team. Uh, so they put the mouse onto the cap, and then they force Gohard to make a rotation. Shapanak here is safe from the eastern side of the map, but if somebody peeks up at F5, they could punish him. But that's where ne Never Carry and Stewards are over there. I wonder if they'll be able to block off Coca Collapse enough so that he doesn't get a reset. I think Failware might, I don't know, I mean, Stefan might even have an angle from uh, all the way in the back. I don't think, maybe not. Maybe. I think Oga Collapse will be the first one to try to reset. Patient game at the moment from Gohard and Utopia. Uh, 1 minute 20 on the clock. Coca Collapse is bouncing as he trades off with the tanks opposite him. Kaizu being the first one to take damage here on the map and his T57 heavy for Gohard, but so far, so slow right now from both teams. Yeah, they're just trading a whole down. That doesn't really do anything. I mean, Panic got reset it already. Got reset it already in his uh, in his tank. Gohar collapse is a very difficult position for him to play. I mean, he's already racked up 2k blocked right now, but it's 5a versus 5a. You either hit, the, I think, the gun mantle that you can pen, uh, the cupolas as well, and Gohar collapse got the first penetration, but Utopia is still going for the scap. Like, I don't know if you can put all of this onto the cap though. Like, he is going to get reset at one point one way or another, I mean, there's no stopping it. Coca Collapse here, facing off against Never Carry and Steroids. The thing is, if Coca Collapse tries to reset, like, he needs he to drive a little... No, no, he needs across, to, the thing yeah. is, he needs to drive a little bit to the left and then peek up, and that will result in two 5A shots into the back. That's only, like, last resort. They don't want to do that unless they have to. And Japanic is angled in a way to try and deflect that shot if possible. I did like this more. Nile should be pushing up and going towards that corner at one point. Like, I think he should push up and go towards the corner and just play from that point on because I don't see how... 50 seconds. Oh, they got a reset. Was no, a reset. No, no, I was, they got a reset. I was wondering if it actually came out. It looks like perhaps Nile got the reset or was that over shoulder? Maybe from... Failware. Kaiser actually. or something? Maybe, yeah. I don't, I don't see Nile or Coco Clubs being on reload when the reset happens. Never carry now backing off to change position to come back around the back. Go collapse, just ignoring Coco Collapse now from where they were. Go collapse actually taking a shot there, got damaged engine, repaired that one instantly, didn't want to hang about and um, move about slowly. Now Never Carry and Steroids gonna rotate all the way around. Looks like they're heading up into the Death Alley area, Daki, where Papa Fallon is and support him or try and push into base one because nobody from Gohar is covering the top area, or who, nobody they think is covering that top area, but they have to expect the Leopard to be there. Look like it's going to have to be uh, triple cap pressure or double cap pressure at the very least for the side of uh, Utopia. The one thing that is going against them right now, Gohar 1, expected. 2, all the buildings are down, so it makes it easier for the Leo to reset. So this is going to be a hard cap to pull off, to be honest. Yeah, Stefan ran into that area now. Annihilator is able to spot Shapanic running over. 
Um, B Huge doesn't have any shots onto Annihilator, but I mean, you can see from the minimap the rotation here from Utopia. Everyone's pushing up into that area. Never Carry only has a small bit of building in front of him. Uh, Papa Powen driving up in front of him is spoiled, and the building, well, the rubble is taken out there. So Zafarchik can now start farming damage into them, start getting resets, and this is going to be a tough one for Utopia to come back out of. Well, it's triple cap pressure, so we're going to have to see if this actually is going to work out for Utopia. It's a First, reset already. Yeah, but. 33 seconds. I mean, Zafar cannot miss too many shots or bounce too many. Oh, there's a shield coming out, though. Ooh, that's a, that's a pretty all in tactic right here. So, Never Carry's going to sit side on. Um, they're going to lift their guns up. Um, Zafar's only going to be able to get shots into Never Carry. At the same time, we're going to try and distract with the rest of the tanks. Um, so, Steroids and Papa Powin can push Never Carry up just a little bit higher to get a bit of safety. Let's listen into Utopia to see if they can actually close this one out and make it. Batam, to Oh, Ducky, we, um, Last we... second reset, but it doesn't matter much because <laughs> Failware getting the ram kill. Oh no, actually Zafar picked it up. I thought Failware got the ram kill. I don't think it's going to change much because one second left, now back to six. They need to kill Coca Collapse and who's going to reset then? Uh, Papa Powen can actually trade the shots here. So Papa Powen's going to get a kill, point blank. Uh, Steroids actually gets the kill. Papa Powen has all the HP. This is still right to the wire, but they just don't have the HP to trade. Papa Powen, um, Zafar check just running. Distraction, Biku getting a kill. This is actually going really close here, Daki. Um, Failware still surviving on a sliver of health. Somebody needs to you know get a shot issue? into him. Um, what's the issue? They have the cap with a 5A versus a, a Leopard and a main Amex 50B. First of all, Papa Pavian can now fall back into the holdown where they're not going to be able to reset him very well. Biku can go to the C0 position in the back lines to make sure that there's no rotation coming around. And if there is, First of all, Biku is a two shot for the Leopard. He'll take one shot from the 5A. He'll take two shots at least from Biku. That's a dead Leopard almost. So this is like, if so, Biku will pick up, or Papa Pavin is already looking there. If Zafar fires, if, Sa rush Biku. if Zafar fires onto Papa Pavin, Biku kills him. There's there already. He's running in Zafar. There's a connection with Papa Pavin. Biku gets the shot. Zafar. He needs to ram. He got the kill. So Zafar on the triple kill, we said this before, when the tank comes down from that area, it can end up being the tank that saves the match. Papa Pavin kind of needs to start going looking for that. He needs to rush the Leopard. The problem is, is that he has to be careful because Failware is going to peek out from wherever he is. Now Zafar has to be careful here because if Failware is not actually in a position to support him, Papa Pavin is just going to push up into Zafar. So where is Failware right now? If we look at the viewpoint from the other team, um, Zafar might, uh, Papa Pavin actually might get a free kill now into Zafar because Failware wasn't in position to be able to support his teammate. Papa Pavin holding his shot. Nicely done now. Papa Pavin can now trade with Failware. Two minutes on the clock as Failware just going to run away Daki into a corner. No, That's the, what he the, was doing. The two minutes is very important because Papa the solo Pavin cap, can't count. The so he can't, what? Did you just say he can't count? Can't, well, <laughs> can't. No, listen. The, diff the thing is, uh, with two minutes left, Papa Pavian cannot solo cap anymore. Now he needs to find the hunt. Now the thing is, uh, I think he, ha he has to repair, repair cards. So he's going to be ready for that. The thing is, if Failware can juke around for long enough, like Papa Pavian has a he's, long... He's got to check the building area first, because that's yeah. where immediately he can proxy that. He can, he, can, he, can, he can spot yeah. that by proxy, but he's a long, long distance away from Failware right now. Oh, what are we to, lose around? to be honest, though, like if I was Failware, I would also be hiding where he is right now, yeah. which is probably not a good thing. I suppose, I mean, Papa Pavan No, but is because like if I was going to be hiding there, then Utopia is going to probably think about that as well. Well, I mean, he's going to the one area you can check, and he's going to have to check down the bottom of the map. He has time. He has um, but one minute. I think he has time to cross over all the way. I, I'm uh, not sure, but I think uh, so. This is another one of these rounds where, unfortunately, we came out of TeamSpeak too early. Um, it was the exact same in Ghost Time we did it before. Papa Powen going the slowest way around possible. Um, now he should check that corner, surely. His teammates will be doing check the corners, because, well, 
seconds initially. I mean, Feywear is right in front of him. Once he sees him, well, he right does in have front time of him. to do it. He's still like yeah. at least 30 has, seconds he has away. No idea. Um, he just has to rush him. Feywear can track him and it's hide the only, back. It's the only thing he can still track. He doesn't have time to make it anywhere else, to be honest. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have time to make it to H8. He doesn't have time anywhere else. He needs to go check that. 35 seconds. He looks to be looking. He looks at it. I yeah. think he might actually he do it. He, he is go going for it. For it. Yep. Papa Pavian might be the hero. He must go for it. He 25 seconds. He's, he's going to slow up in the buildings. So this is a problem. The buildings are going to That's slow down. That's fine. He has time. He has time. He's going to see him. He's going to see him. Look to your left, Papa Pavin. Look to your left. Look to your left. Other left. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. he's looking. No. He's looking. 12 seconds, he spotted. He's he found get shot. He needs Papa to hit Pavin, this. Papa Pavin, time, pressure. Nicely yeah. done, well done, well played Papa Pavin. Ooh. Very nicely done, and well deserved their win for Utopia. To be honest, if Go Hard won it, it would be a well deserved win as well, because they managed to do what they needed to do. Um, so, if anything, a fantastic trade between these two teams, very equal to each other, very equal. That is close. I think actually Papa Pavin got lucky that he only had one minute on the clock. Because, like, the thing is, with one minute, he just doesn't have time to go. Like, you have two sets of buildings, because Ghost Town is, like, symmetrical yeah. or pretty much symmetrical. Um, so you have the set of buildings in the top side, where you can drive in. You have the, where you also have a set of buildings in the bottom side, you can drive in as where well. you can drive in as right, well. Yeah, yeah. But with one minute left, to drive all the way around from that position, he would not make it. He would, he would not make that. And I was going to say, because another thing is people would have just said, go inside the building area. Now, you go inside the building area, you're a 50B, you've got a full clip. You can track him coming over, but he had two repair packs. Yeah, two repair packs. So he'd be, boom, repair the first one. Hit him again, boom, repair the first one. And he only needs one shot. Only needs one shot. He would use a small repair kit first and then his big repair yeah. kit. Yeah. Depends on if you get Samurai, though. Um, the thing is, he would actually sh he sh like he should have driven into the building area, not the one on the top. He should have driven in the bottom one. And it was a very good shot he did as well when um, Zafarchik was running in against Biku as well to connect in that Biku shot. Biku played that not that move. great, in my opinion. Biku should be like he should be peeking up, like you can yeah. he can peek by turret. Now Zafar got spotted already full speed. Now if Biku sees him coming, he can take some distance. Yeah, to yeah. get at least those two Don't shots, right? Because the, yeah. the ram did a bit. The damage as well. The ram him. killed him, so yeah. uh, Biku would have, I think, been able almost to kill him. Yeah, or or, or just about make him one shot. Yeah, at least. yeah. Papa Power would have had an easier time, but um, right to the wire. I'm sure. I mean, listening into the comms, obviously, um, for everyone who speaks Polish, they would have enjoyed it. But again, you can always hear the emotion. Certainly, you could hear the emotion earlier on when we listened into Savage Squad. So um, now it's going to be go hard on the attack. It's going to be Utopia on the defense. It is going to be super interesting listening to the tone. Um, and go hard's voice. Um, I don't. When uh, that's a that's, that's a depressing round. That's what I would call a depressing mm -hmm. round because uh, it doesn't make you feel good. Um, I still think that like you know, feel where going there. Like I said, I would be hiding there as well. So that's an issue. I, I would hide there as well. I think you should have gone like H8, 9 in those buildings. I was thinking about. I mean, you always see people use. I mean, nine times out of ten, if someone hides in the building, it's in the C5 building, and uh, people don't hide really in the the H. Um, Six, seven, one. That's, that's equal to it. It so. would be the most unlogical thing because he, from there, if he was on that side of the map, he would not be able to support uh, as, as far at all. Yeah, as silly as it sounds, you would almost in a way want to hide um, at the bottom of the map and then rotate back around to where Papa Pavin just was because you're not going to go back to where you just were. Look at Gohard though, they're pushing straight across the tail line. aggressive here. Um, spotted out Stefan, not spotted, but other tanks spotted out coming around the bottom here. Uh, all of Utopia at the north of the map, so. Gohard's plan is kind of given up here, so interesting tactic. I mean, what are they actually trying to do here from Gohard? Well, they know that it's very hard to deal with Utopia because Utopia has double Type 5 heavy. Just those Type 5s will just sit on the corner and destroy anything that goes into the cap because they shoot the turret, they splash both tanks, they keep doing that, they knock out crew, they knock out modules. Um, your tank pretty much gets wrecked until you're basically nothing more than a health pool. So they want to avoid that. That's why they took quick control over to the south side of the map. And now they're taking quick control with the mouses. They're trying to force Utopia into coming to reset. And they want to do as much damage as they possibly can because Utopia has a more healthier lineup. They want to kill something as it comes around the corner. Annihilator sitting in the cap circle, looking at the view here from Shipanic and the area we normally call Death Alley because so much team fights kind of focus into this area. Go collapse in the cap circle here with Annihilator, so it's all going to depend on how Utopia are going to move this as to in the cap circle, 25 seconds to go. Uh, negative pushing in over here into Mukha. There needs to be a reset coming in from someone, Daki. We're down to 20 seconds. Looks like Mukha might be the one to do it. Pa Pavin coming over. Coco Collapse takes a shot from Mukha. So there's a reset coming in. Oh, on wait fire. a minute. On fire in the mouse right to the face. 
Coca-Cola apps does not have an extinguisher. He has chocolate, a medipack, and repair pack, so it's a lot of damage going out into him. Yeah, and Muka is doing really well from that position. You can see the damage he's putting onto the side of those mouses. And Gohard's bleeding. Failware's bleeding even more. This is not going well whatsoever. Um, Failware's taking a lot of damage. He's lost his commander for this as well. Gohard are still in this fight, but Utopia are winning the trades and they're winning it well. Biku taking a lot of damage here. Papa Pavin taking a bit of damage here as well. The cap continues, but Gohard are having to reposition. Coca Colaps not in a great position right now. He's down to 400 HP. He's down to even less now. 240 left and Nile bleeding. Koga Collapse bleeding. I don't think it's going well for Gohard whatsoever. Nope, it's not going well at all. I think it's a perfect time to listen in to Gohard and see how they plan to get out of this one. Okay, well, we're a bit early for that one, so we're not going to hear them just now. They've lost Coca Collapse. Annihilator now fighting back here with Mucka. Let's actually listen in now and see how they're going to do it. Try to kill one of the three pens. I can help you also, I can help you also, we can help you. Track, track, track. Track him again. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm reloading. He's still the reload as well. I have shot. Does type have a shot, guys? Yes, he has. Okay, I was gonna die. Batchet minus one. Minus two, Batchet. He gave you a good front, he can't. Actually. Six seconds, six seconds. I will pick. I will try to pick. We need to. Yeah, I need to go behind. I'm reloading. I'm reloading. Okay. It's... Nice team sick, by the way. Why? Why we can't just play here instantly when they spotted? Why? Why we need going here? Why we need kite like this? What? What happened? Lol. It's four tanks was spotted in one square. I was spotted here and I said that batch is not clear. We just need to. We can't just stay and uh, and and fab this. Well, we said it, Daki, it would be interesting to hear the team speak of Gohard, and that's kind of what we were expecting to hear, wasn't it? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit of frustration creeping through. Um, yeah, what, not much to say about this. You could hear definite frustration in the voice of Zafar. Um, it's not going well. Um, this, this, they didn't cover off Muka's position. Like, you, if you go cap, you cannot let Muka just, like, first cross like that. Like, yeah. Honestly, teams don't let, like, we can watch Stefan die. <laughs> Stefan think. going down swinging, going down swinging. No, Papa Pavin picking up a double kill and he's type 5 heavy. Um, Utopia, we, we said this before, Utopia are playing really strong right now. Really playing as a, a team, really playing well together. Like, when I was watching Elevate do this, it was actually much better. Um, first of all, they had somebody on the bottom corner, like you have Muka, the bottom corner. On that corner there to make sure that they uh <laughs> to make sure they farm the guy that crosses over but then they also have another thing and i think it was a fog b if i'm not wrong Fosh. Uh, Fosh, Fosh. it doesn't matter it does it does not matter you don't call it a meese you call it a mouse it does not ma i will call it meese from now on if it makes you feel bad okay so they have a fog Fosh, Fosh. over i'm gonna pull out my hair in a second they have a Fosh. Over there, with that can farm those guys in the side that are gonna peek out. But the thing is, like they already let Muka get into the position unpunished, so Muka is just freely peeking up onto the mouses, okay. and then the the type five from Papa Pavin. I think it was Papa Pavin. I think it was Papa Pavin. Uh, you Pavin. know you're getting it wrong when I'm having to tell you how to say um, a tank name or player name. I think it was Papa Pavian who then just peeks up and shoots Coca Collapse. And these two mouses, they're just sitting there. And there's, there's no support. There's nobody that can do anything to save their lives. They bleed both, m most of their HP. They go down to like a thousand. Coca Collapse goes down to like a hundred. Yeah. So these mouses just bleed. There's no response from Go Hard. There's nothing going on around the map. So far as in the 1 2 line doing absolutely nothing. Uh, Utopia has four super heavies that are having a great time. They're just having fun. They're laughing on TeamSpeak. It's going amazing. Great fun. Yeah, the best great kind team of speak, fun. Great guys. Like, um, uh, don't, don't stir the there's pot. Just yeah, in the middle of frustration. Don't, either don't go hard, mouses went too soon, or the other tanks were not in position at the right time because Utopia I took think positions. They were in position. they were I think the go hard two mouse were okay or mousen. I believe, Moisen. I'm going to get it wrong again. The same Moisen? thing is, is when we did this, I watched the chat, I looked back at the chat, and everyone writes the correct term for multiple mouse in chat, but that still doesn't help anyone who's not a native German speaker know how to pronounce 
Um, because it has the gem issues know. as well. I don't know. Maybe some decent issues mouse, there mouse. between the team, but they have to make it work now on Cliff. They are defending first. They have double 430. Uh, that looks like a semi-aggressive lineup because the 430 obviously. Okay, this uh, one from uh, Utopia as well is very flexible. Yeah, the thing is with the 430s, obviously you cannot use nine or sevens. They're not allowed to use special tanks or war tanks and such. So the 430 is the best. Like it has the highest DPM of all Russian media. 430 mediums. also has a different textured log in it. It looks like a birch log on the back of it. The same, same tree they actually just ran over. I mean, it's as close to a 907 as you can get, right? But ultra magical armor that bounces everything. Oh, Annihilator taking one in the face already. Uh, if Utopia is going to keep pushing this, they're going to uh, kill everybody. Annihilator taking another one in the face right now. And this is hyper aggressive here. Biku and Shipanik are not holding back here. They're going right down their throats. And look at how aggressive this push is here. They're going to try and drop Kaiser. They want to take this one. They want to finish this match quickly, Daki. Yeah, but Shuku in the meantime is getting uh, punished for this. This crossing might hurt just a little bit more than they expected because Philware was there. Negative was there as well. Negative goes down towards the one shot, but he's still alive. Philware now bleeding as well. Gohard just about holding on. Utopia with the HP advantage. Advantage, but no positional advantage right now and no gun advantage either. This might be a little bit overzealous from them. The initial shock and awe factor here from Utopia has not gone in their favor until they can ca try and perhaps carry on push. Looks like Sturoid's going to be the next one going in. He gets the kill onto Kaiser. He wants to get a shot into Failware as well. Failware's not reloaded. He's trying to protect negative. A little ram in there to negative to do a little bit more damage. Sturoid is going to get the shot. No, he doesn't. As Annihilator picks up the kill. Now, where's the rest of the tanks from Gohard and Utopia? They're trying to come running in from the middle. Shapanic getting the kill on negative. Never can he get the kill on Failware now. Gohard with four tanks. Utopia with four tanks and things are going to reset now things are going to come back down again as everyone gets new positions never mind about that positional advantage utopia let uh, putting in some more aggression actually returned the favor because they didn't stop they kept going the tanks from gohar most of them were still on the reload or just about to come off of it uh like failware and negative but they were so low hp i think failware i mean i made a mistake being against the 5a but yeah it's a tough situation at that point but now the fight will calm down it's 4v4 there is an hp lead for utopia but we can blame that pretty much on, on 5A so far. Ooh. This is not going to work out. Papa Pavin's already here. He's going to get punished. That's 1.2k to the face. Um, so far getting farmed here. Papa Pavin trying to get into that engine deck. Um, Hello? So far is going to get shots into Papa Pavin. Is there any support here for Papa he Pavin? Needs no. kill Papa. Um, he needs to kill Papa Pavin. Yeah, Papa, Papa, Papa Pavin's going to come running down from here. Mocha is looking to try and get shots. Papa Pavin's going to run the opposite way though, and he's going to get himself safe. So. Zafar just throwing away HP there, perhaps a little that. bit of frustration driving I out there and really open. I really don't understand that. Not expecting Gohard, to, or sorry, not expecting Utopia to have a tank in that position. There's no excuse for driving like that pa rather Pavin than going can, around. can rush at him now, he's, he's fully loaded again. I don't think he can rush him, Stefan's going to be controlling him from the hill, but this really swings it into Utopia's favour. If that 430 was full HP, he'd be a powerhouse because he'd be shooting, shooting, shooting. Papa oh, Pavin failed, by the way. Oh. Um, if, if he was full HP, he'd be shooting, shooting, shooting. Now, yep. he's pretty much degraded to uh, a Creator 31 player. You know, Redline. Redline sniper. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. What? Didn't do nothing. You're, you're, you're really polite sometimes to your uh, clan members. Hey, he knows I love him. Okay. Okay. There's no stronger love than a clan commander for his clan mates, is there? <laughs> sure thing, yeah, if that's what you believe. Uh, I'd like to see, like, ammo loadouts for the bots, because Stefan has APCR loaded. I want to see what Niall has, because if they both have APCR, they're going to struggle against this 5A. Actually, struggle a lot. Stefan, yep, APCR. 13 shots left. He's got one missing right now. Annihilator's also on APCR. Mm -hmm. Shapanic. Oh, Ooh, nice. didn't take a shot. Didn't need to take I miss his. Um, yeah, but you could say the same thing about Zafar, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a big, big difference. Two shots he didn't have to take. Didn't have to take one, didn't have to take two. Oh, oh nice. Nice. Papa Pavin stepping up again. Surely the MVP of um, Utopia here during this match. Goga Collapse, still full HP. He should be the one making the play. I think he should push uh, the 9 0 line like Zafar did, but better. If he gets uh, into the right position, he can do a lot of damage towards it's this Maka DVP. going to do that super dangerous claim at the back, though. Papa Pavan is going to get farmed a little bit here, can get himself safe. Yeah. Stefan's probably going to. Stefan needs to no, play slightly more aggressive. It's not pushing over at the same time. Now, Mocha was down at that K3 area, so I was wondering if he's going to do a hyper dangerous climb. 
Um, Papa Pawan, oh, just edging back in time there. Um, there's no kind of coverage for him, so Papa Pawan, I mean, Annihilator could potentially push as well. It has to be careful, he doesn't do that. Um, Stefan is spotted here by Mokka. Mokka getting one shot into him, it's very nicely done. Stefan just goes invisible. Mokka's now looking across to Annihilator. He's in a good position here to support Papa Pavan. They're going to try and rush Annihilator. There's nothing they can nice. really do about it. Papa Pavan getting the kill there onto Stefan, peeking over, taking a shot for his troubles. Um, great one on one trade there. Papa Pavan coming out on top. Now Annihilator is on a one shot. Zafarchik is on a one shot. Google Collapse has all the HP, but doesn't have any shots because he's around the back of the mountain. Annihilator on reload. We said he's going to struggle against that 5A, and Switching into I, heat now, I yeah. think he did really struggle against him. Um, this round was lost when Zafar Never drove. Never carry, it's still got full HP. Yeah, I mean, I mean this, this round, this round was him. lost when Zafar just drove through the middle of the map. Wow. Uh, trade there, never carry. Well, uh, maybe not. Double clips. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, clipped out there by Coca Cola apps. Papa Pavin again! MVP! Step up, laddie. Never, uh, carry, never just carry. Missed that shot. Uh, just missed that shot on Annihilator. That is potentially bad, but Mukka still has full HP as well, so he can come in and trade from Coca Cola apps, taking a shot. Papa Pavin coming over the top, getting a shot there into Annihilator as Mukka kills Annihilator. Coming around, clipping around to Coca Cola apps. You panic, getting a double kill, and Utopia taking this one 5 to 2 and go hard. Oh, you guys are going to have to go back to the drawing board. It's not good at all. Not what we expect. But hey, fantastic play from Utopia. We said coming into this they were going to be a dangerous opponent. And they have shown everyone definitely like they are um, they're one of the teams to be feared right now. Great play from Utopia, honestly. Like continuing the aggression down the 1-2 line, direct countering what Gohar was doing um, very well. Again.